To start creating our template, the first thing I want to do is save our file in a sequence folder. Go into the HDB sequence and in here create a new folder called HDB0000. In that folder, create another folder called Katana and save your file in it. The template we are creating will be used for every shot, so it makes sense to save it in a sep separate sequence folder rather than into the individual shots. I start the template with creating a globals node. The main goal with this node is to define some base variables we need, for example, the project path. This will ensure no matter where you have your project data, the template will be able to read the shot and as asset files correctly. The node itself is actually a group node. So to create it, hit tab and type in GR to narrow down the list and select the group node. To view and edit the node parameters, hover over the node and hit E or click on the green square on the right hand side. This will de display the parameters of the node on the right side of your screen. We want to add a user variable. To do that, click on the little wrench symbol on the right side and select edit user parameters. Select add and since we want to set a path, select string from the menu. Click on the little wrench and select rename parameter from the menu and rename the variable name to path. We want to set the root path to your project in here. For you, this would be the path to the extracted downloaded material for the course. You can see in my case, the path contains the project data we looked at previously. To be able to identify the node easily, click on the name and rename the node to global. Next, Click on the wrench on the parameters again and select show user parameters at top. Then select toggle group node appearance. And as last step, select finish editing user parameters. These toggles are more of a cosmetic nature. The first toggle tells Katana to display the path variable directly on the node parameters without having it grouped on the user. The second toggle changed the node display to look like a normal node instead of a group node. And the last step was to tell Katana that we're done adding variables. When making templates, it is always important for sections to be easy identifiable. We will use backdrops to help with that. Hit tab and search for and create a backdrop. Position and resize it so that the globals node is within its borders. What's nice about the backdrop node is if you select and move it, every node within its borders will move as well. Now double click on the backdrop and type in the backdrop name. Let's call it Globals. Change the font size and change the color to make it easily identifiable from far. To load our assets, we will use the Importomatic node. Create one by hitting tab and typing in Importomatic. The Importomatic is a super node which ties into your asset management pipeline. In our case, we will be loading in the caches manually. Click on the plus and here you will see four options. Add a Lembic, add casting sheet and add scene graph XMLs. We will mainly use Alembics and scene graph XMLs. Even though we are setting up a sequence-wide template, it is easier to work within a shot. So as a first step, we load a shot camera from HTTP 10. You can find it under the H under HTTP 10 inside of the cache folder. The HTTP sequence was shot in an apartment and we have a LiDAR scan of the set. We load this next. Select the scene graph XML and navigate to the assets set HDB folder and load the XML file. The scene graph XML file is, a read is readable in any text editor if you want to take a look on 
how it's set up. Our main character, the samurai, which we want to load the shot cache for. Again, select Add Scene Graph XML and navigate to the HDB 10 cache folder and select the Samurai XML. Set up a backdrop node for the importomatic and call it Assets HDB 10. I've set the backdrop color to blue and scaled the font up to 3, so it's easy to read when you are zoomed out in the node graph. With the importomatic setup, take a look at the scene graph and expand root down to geo. You will see three packages, the shot cam, the set and the samurai. If you expand the packages down to their components, you can see their proxies displaying in the viewer. To navigate in the viewer, you can use F for focusing on a selected object or Alt plus left mouse to rotate middle mouse or alt plus middle mouse for panning and alt plus right mouse is for zooming in and out of the frame. We are still not fully set up in the importomatic. If you look at the bottom left corner of the viewer, you can see a drop down menu to select cameras. Right now the shot camera is not listed. To add the camera to the list, go to the shot cam in the importomatic node and switch on add to camera list. Now you will be able to see the camera in a drop-down menu. Without any asset management system, LookDev and textures don't get loaded automatically. So let's load those for the Samurai. Right-click on the Samurai entry and select Assign Look File. The Look File is asset-specific and you can find it if you navigate to the Asset Samurai Look File folder. Nothing immediate will change, but if you select the Samurai package in the scene graph, you should see a new attribute called look file on it. Right click on the Samurai again, and this time select assign attribute file to load the textures. Navigate to the texture folder for the Samurai and select the texture XML. You won't be able to see the changes because we are missing another step to assign the textures to the asset. If you're using Katana 4.5 or 5.0, XML is no longer supported. Instead, import the set HDB flat and the samurai.v1 LMIC file. And assign the samurai underscore ABC look file. If you're using the Alembic version, you must rename samurai underscore v1 underscore abc to samurai in the importomatic to ensure the hierarchies match. It's also worth noting that XML files can still be assigned as attribute files and the textures.xml file is still needed. When designing templates, the goal is to stay as flexible as possible. But with all these separate paths, loading several shots will get unmanageable. We will change the loading path to expressions to solve that. For a start, I'm also going to change a hierarchy on how the camera gets loaded and move the camera package to slash root slash world slash cam instead of geo dash shot cam. Select the camera entry and under the name, you can just type in the hierarchy you want. Replace the current path and type in slash root slash world slash cam. In the scene graph, expand cam all the way down to the camera to see the new hierarchy. Now to set up an expression, right click on the path and select expression. The path will turn blue and a little downwards pointing arrow appears next to the path. Click on the arrow to see the expression. I want to change the expression to read the project path from the globals node. A quick way to do that is to select the globals node, right click on the path variable and copy the path. Going back to the importomatic node, you can then right click on the ABC asset path and select past expression. This copies the value as an expression, which is exactly what we want. 
but because we lose the original path, select the resulting expression, hit Ctrl C, C to copy it into the clipboard, and Ctrl Z to get back to the original expression. At the end of the expression, type in percent and paste the global expression behind it. Now remove the path all the way to slash cache cache and type in percent %s to read the get param variable instead. Percent %s is basically a placeholder and reads the variable as a string. The resulting path should be exactly as before with the project path being referenced from the globals node by use of the getParam function, which lets you query parameters from different nodes. We will now do this for each package loaded in the importmatic, including the texture and lookdiv XML files. Next step, we'll set up the root attributes and texture assignments. Create a new backdrop, call it setup, and give it a color. In the importomatic, we are loading the texture XML. Let me just show you the context of this XML. It points to the individual textures, but without the full path, because this would be different for every user. We need to add the path prefix. And from that, I have written a little op script which will automatically add the full path to each texture. You can find the op script in the Katana template snippets folder. Go to File, Import, and Navigate to the Katana Nodes folder. Select the texture load Katana file. Katana uses Lua as a scripting language. If you take a look at the op script, it basically cycles through all the existing textures and prepends the path set up in the globals node. You can see the expression under the user section. This uncovers actually also a small error I made. The node should be called globals with an S. Connect the op script with the importmatic, and now if you view from the op script, you can see the textures assigned in the attributes tab if you select the actual geometry of the samurai. Create a render settings node after the texture op script. We will use this to set up a resolution and define the default render camera. For resolution, set it to HD. Navigate to the camera shape and drag the shape node to the render settings camera path using the middle mouse button. Katana defaults to 3D Lite for the render engine, so we are set. But this is the place where you would change it if you're using a different renderer. We set motion blur in the render settings node, and to match real world cameras, you usually want a center frame 180 degree shutter. You can achieve this by setting shutter open to minus 0.25 and shutter close to 0.25. This centers our motion blur on the frame and gives us a 180 degree shutter. Now create the look file manager and connect it. This lets you load specific look files or root look files, but we are not going to do that since we already set up our root settings above. The only reason we create the look file manager is to resolve the look file loaded for the samurai in the importomatic. Just to show you the root settings set up from the render settings node, select the root in the scene graph and view the attributes tab. Under render settings, you can see the attributes set by the render settings node. Now we are done with the setup part and we can move on to the materials section. To add the materials, I create a material stack. Select Add and Material in the stack. Click Add Shader and select Surface in the DL section. Now select DL Principled in the Surface Shader drop-down menu. 3D Light's Principled Shader is based on Disney's Principled Shader, which offers artist-friendly settings. 
set the name as default. Material stacks don't have an incoming port for connections, so to add the stack to the main recipe, you need to create a merge node and connect the material stack to it. As a general rule, the main stream should be the first input on a merge node, and any additional node should be the second input. The reason for this is because that the attributes coming from the second input override settings from the first input. Now let's create a material backdrop. We are going to make use of the default shader by assigning it to slash rule slash world slash geo. By doing this, everything below geo will have a shader assigned, no matter if the asset has a look file or not. It's necessary to avoid any geometry to not have a shader, which usually causes issues when rendering. Create a material assign node, expand materials in the scene graph, and middle mouse drag the default material to the material assigned slot. Middle mouse root world geo into the cell statement to create the shader catch all assignment. Since Katana works hierarchically, any asset below geo will inherit the shader, except if they have a locally assigned shader with this, like the samurai. After the material section, create a backdrop for the sequence setup. I'll make this purple. We will use this section to create a sequence light trick and set any attributes we want to set overall per sequence. Create a gaffer tree node, which is a super node to set up and manage your lights and cannot connect it to the incoming stream. To organize the template a bit, left click on the output port, drag the mouse down and hit dot on the keyboard. This will create a dot node, which you can use for readability. Create another backdrop and call this shot work. We won't create any nodes in a shot work, just two, two, just two dots, one on top and one at the bottom. We will need these later when we set up the different shots. Before we create our passes, we need to add a setup backdrop for our 3D light globals. Call it prepass setup. 3D light has created a super node which combines several settings usually found on separate katana nodes. This node is called DL settings. Create one and connect it to the incoming stream. It combines quality settings, camera settings, volumetrics and AOV settings into one super node. Now two more steps before the skeleton of our sequence template is ready. Create two render nodes, one for the character and one for the set and connect them to the main streams. We will be using a script to name these passes later, so this is all we do for now. We will also need a Chrome and Gracefear setup, and I have created a small template for that already. Load it by importing it through File Import. Navigate to the Katana Nodes folder and load reference sphere.katana. Connect the template to the main stream. This is our base structure of our template. Let's save this as version 1.0. At this point, we have the base template ready, but two elements are still missing. We want to set up the shot variables, as well as define where our renders will render to. This is where the scene graph variables come into play. To define them, you need to go to the project settings. Select graph state variables and choose add variables in the drop down menu. Do this three times in total. Rename each variable 
by clicking on the wrench icon and select rename. Call the first variable pass, the second call shot, and the last one call sequence. You should now also see the three variables on the top of the screen. The variables don't have any entrance, so let's add some. Add char underscore beauty to pass, HDB0010 to shot, and HDB in capitals to sequence. With the variables set, we can now set up our output path. If you select any of the render nodes right now, the output path is just a file name. This file name is set in a DL settings node. Select and view the node and open up the image layers section. Image file name defines the output file name and the path. We will want this to be dynamic based on which path, which shot and sequence. To achieve this, we will leverage the scene graph variables to drive the output. Switch the image file name to be an expression. We will basically do the same as what we did for the importomatic file loads, but additionally referencing the scene graph variables. Now this is a pretty long expression, so to make things easier, I've prepared the expression in a txt file, which you can find in the Katana notes folder. Open up output path.txt in any notepad editor and copy and paste the expression into the image file name. The expression relies on a version variable being set in the globals node. So select the globals node, click on the wrench icon, select edit user parameters and add a string variable, rename it to version and set 1.0 as default. Click on the little wrench again to finish editing user parameters. Now that we have set up the output path, we can finish setting up our render passes. First, let's import the op script I prepared to resolve the per pass name. Go to File Import, navigate to the Katana Notes folder, and import the render path op script Katana file. This op script looks for the pass placeholder and replaces it with the current pass name. Next, we need to create a variable set node. Create the node and place it before the op script and connect it to the incoming stream. We want to use this to set up the pass name. So set the variable name to pass and the variable value to char underscore beauty. Rename the variable set node to vs underscore char underscore beauty. The user expression on the op script node can't find the variable so node name. To fix that, copy the variable value value and paste it as expression in the op script node. This will update the expression to the correct node name. Katana remembers expression relationships. So if you were to rename the variable set node now, the expression name will be updated. This will come in very handy when we want to create new passes by copying the current pass. Connect the op script to the variable set node and the output to the render node. Now, if you look at the render node, you can see the full path where our renders will end up. I also want to set up the pass name based on the pass variable. Copy variable value and paste as expression on the render node on pass name. This will also rename the render node to the pass name. Now for the second pass, delete the render node we had created earlier on. Select the char beauty pass nodes, including the op script and variable set, and copy and paste them. Katana will update the expressions automatically, so you can now select the new variable set node and change the variable set value to set underscore beauty. You will see the expression working when you see the render node automatically renaming to set underscore beauty. 
remember to rename the rest of the nodes. Take a quick look at the Chrome Sphere pass. You will see the render pass set up to work exactly the same way with the variable set node driving the pass name. I'll talk a bit about sequence based lighting and why I put so much emphasis on setting up a sequence template and not a per shot template. The VFX industry has been recently moving to a sequence based lighting approach, including us at ILAMP. In fact, we have been pushing towards this for several years already. The goals behind the sequence based lighting is efficiency, improvements, and faster work uh, and faster turnaround times, as well as scalability without compromising on quality. It doesn't always make sense if you have a lot of one-off sh shots or generally different shots, but generally this approach has been a big improvement to our workflows. The principle is simple. Find as many shots which are similar in angle and lighting and group them together. If it makes sense, have the same artist light these from start to finish. Usually a lead lighter or a sequence lighter sets up the sequence first before spreading the shots or the shot groups to artists. They will start with broad stroke lighting and use these for all shots. Often we define a look at this stage and iteratively improve the sequence light rig. Depending on the size of the sequence and time frame, either the sequence lighter is able to do the shot lighting all the way from the start to finish or we spread out the shots to lighters, which take on groups of shots for their shot tweaks. Often at this stage, animation in LookDev is already locked, but changes could still happen. If we need to spread out the shots, I usually try to group shots by lighting and a shot angle, but also I try to give shots, shot lighters a, var a variety of shots to make it more interesting for them. This has been proven to be quite successful, especially with Katana's templatable and node-based system. To really be able to switch between shots with ease, we need to set up variable switches so we can leverage the scene graph variables within a template. Hit tab and type in variable to see all the nodes available which can leverage the scene graph variables. Create a variable switch node and connect it between the shot work and pre-pass setup. View the switch's parameters. It has a variable name and a pattern matcher. Set a variable name to shot, which would be the scene graph variable we want to query. Now we just need to set up the patterns, as this takes care of matching the inputs to the different values of the scene graph variable. I know HB10 is connected to I0, so I set HB10 for I0. Now select the shot work, including both dots, and copy and paste the shot, shot work two more times. Connect the incoming stream to each new shot work and connect the output dots of the shot work to the variable switch node by dropping off the connections on the down arrow. This will automatically add additional ports to the variable switch nodes and connect to those. If you have difficulty selecting the output dot nodes, hover with the mouse over the node and hit apostrophe and you will automatically get a connection. And you can connect it to the down arrow icon on the variable switch node. Now you should have I0 to I2 and we can map the inputs to the different shots. Set HDB30 for I1 and HDB50 for I2. If you look up at the variables, you can see we don't have all the shots available. To fix that, go to project settings and add HDB30 and HDB50 to the drop down list of the variable. Now you have these options here in a drop down list and it's going to switch between each shot. If you want to verify the setup works, you can do this with a simple experiment. Add a prune node to HDB30 and add the path to the samurai to it. Now if you switch between HB10 and HB30, you should see the samurai disappearing when we switch to the, the 30 shot. We need to do the same setup for the importomatics. 
If you want to load the other shots via scene graph variables, we can set up the same variable switch node and duplicate the input matics. I will actually also go a step further because I know that I've structured the different shots on disk consistently with the same naming conventions. They are just in different shot folders. So in the import matic I can set up the same shot and sequence variables. We will copy these from the DL settings node. Copy the shot and sequence query expression. Go back to the import matic open up the path expression of the shot cam. Add a comma and paste the expression. Select the sequence name HDB and replace it with a percent %s. And do the same for the shot name HDB10. You will get a not enough arguments error. So to fix that, put everything after the percent in brackets. Now the path will switch based on the scene graph variables. Do the same changes for the Samurai XML file path. We don't need to do this for the LiDAR or the Looktive and Texture files, since they are in the Assets folder. Now because we do have some shots with more than one asset, I still want to set up the variable switch node for the input tematics. Duplicate the HTTP 10 input tematic another two times and copy the variable switch node from the shot work. Connect the duplicated input tematics to the switch node and you are set. Now you can use the scene graph variables to switch between the shots. Lastly, I'll rename the backdrops to make it visually clearer which input matic is for which shot. I recommend to be as descriptive as possible with your templates and to name everything as much as possible. So if you have to pass on your template to other artists, it is clear what is what. Now we have a fully working template and we can move on to actually lighting our first shot.